Hey Matt, it's time to react to TikToks. You know, if I were to come up with a ranking of species, um, I think, of course, I'd put humans at the top and then maybe chimpanzees, elephants, dogs. Actually, dogs would be even farther down. And then you get uh, you get to like squirrels and rats and bugs. And then beneath that, you would finally get to male feminists. I don't like male feminists, in other words, is what I'm trying to say. We've watched some male feminist TikTok videos before, and I was just thinking that I'm not depressed enough today or angry enough, so we're going to dive in once again and see what the male feminists of TikTok have to offer us. So let's check this out. When I asked men what they feared, as much as a woman feared being raped, I had three answers show up a number of times. Two of them I think we can dismiss, and one of them seemed valid. The first one was that men said they feared not measuring up. But while that's a valid fear, the pressure you put on yourself to live up to your perceived role in society is very different than the fear a woman may have of what a man may do to her without her consent. Vastly different fears. Let's put that one aside. The second one I saw a lot of was men saying that they feared being falsely accused of rape and having that ruin their lives. First of all, demonstratively untrue, Trump, Kavanaugh. Secondly, while rape statistics are notoriously hard to pin down, it's at least arguable that a man is more likely to be raped than to be falsely accused of rape. The threat is vanishingly small. So what checks all the boxes? What has the systemic, pervasive, uh, the antagonism, the, the realistic threats of violence? The one that rang true to me was how black men fear the police. Wow, so insightful. Okay, first of all, um, well, I, I love how he wants to give examples. He wants, he wants to ex, ex, you know, explain why false accusations of rape, he wants to prove why that's not a real threat. And then he lists two guys who were falsely accused that would be Trump and Kavanaugh. But before we even get to that, what the hell kind of bizarre question is this? How can I rank my degree of fear in a particular thing against someone else's degree of fear in something else? How do I even do that? And why? So now we're competing to see who has the most fear. Oh, I'm more fearful than you. See, I win. The appropriate response to that question is what? What the hell are you talking about? Why are you asking me that, you weirdo? Who are you talking to? I also don't believe that any man was actually asked, what do you fear as much as women fear being raped? And answered, I fear not measuring up. But if I were to actually you know, engage the question, um, here's something that men could fear. I don't know, being murdered? Because men are much more likely to be murdered than women. You're not going to hate men. Yeah. <laughs> men are more likely to die in car accidents too, so you could, you could fear car accidents. Hey. Men are more likely to end up homeless or in prison. Can I get a hey, man? Hey, man. Of all these fears, the police are the least rational thing to fear, especially for black men, as more unarmed white men are shot by cops each year than unarmed black men. <laughs> but for both races, the incidents are so vanishingly rare that it's not worth thinking about. That boy is good. All right, let's continue. Welcome to Consent 101, where I teach grown ass men what consent is. A lot of you seem to think of consent as an unbreakable trade agreement. This is normal when patriarchy cuddles your entire life to the point you feel entitled to someone else's body. You think that your dick is more important than a human person. What may be shocking to you is that it is not. You're not entitled to someone else's body, your dick is not more important than a human person, and consent is not an unbreakable trade agreement. Once consent is given, it can be taken away any time that the person who gave the consent wishes. Therefore, if a person says yes 10 times but no on the 11th time, then if you continue, it is rape. Likewise, if a person says no 10 times but at the end gives in and says yes just to shut you up, it is at the very least sexual harassment and manipulation and worst case scenario, it is still rape. If you need more elaboration, I would be happy to give you some. In the meanwhile, don't be a rapist. Mm. Um, here we have, of course, the male feminist's favorite pastime. He enjoys nothing so much as talking about how opposed he is to rape. So there's definitely a he doth protest too much sort of situation happening here. Hey, guys, listen, controversial statement here, but I'm just going to come out and say it. Rape is bad. That's like every male feminist TikTok video. Bold stuff, chief. <laughs> No one needs the videos explaining, well, this is rape. Rape is bad. Here's why rape is bad. That, that's, that's one of the main problems with these anti-rape explainers is that they seem to imply that rape is the result of misunderstandings. 
Every single person on earth knows that rape is bad, knows what rape is, and knows how not to rape people. Everyone knows that. And then you'll say, well, what do you mean? There are, are you saying that there are no rapists in the world? No, of course there are rapists. They know that it's wrong and they're doing it anyway. Rape, murder, awesome and rape. You said rape twice. I like rape. What do you think, that there are rapists out there that are going around raping women and they're, they're going to see this male feminist TikTok video? Don't be a rapist. Oh, so oh, so we're not supposed to do that. You're saying, oh, well, that's silly me. He also says, if a woman says no 10 times and then says yes, it's still no. So we shouldn't take a woman at her word? A woman, a woman can change her mind and decide that she doesn't want to have sex. You're saying, I agree there. But she can't change her mind to decide that she does want to have sex? Or sometimes she can, but sometimes she can't, and it's up to you to, to decide which is which? A few decades ago, private citizens used to be largely that, private. What's changed? Well, the internet. Think about everything you browsed, searched for, watched, or tweeted. Now imagine all of that data being crawled through, collected, and aggregated by third parties into a permanent public record, your record. Having your private life exposed for others to see was once something only celebrities worried about. But in an era where everybody is online, everyone is a public figure. We're all kind of celebrities in our own right. To keep my data private then, I go online. I turn to ExpressVPN. Um, every time I turn the ExpressVPN on, I'm given a random IP address shared by other ExpressVPN customers. That makes it more difficult for third parties to identify me and harvest my data. And the best part is how easy ExpressVPN is to use. No matter what device you're on, uh, whether it's a phone, laptop, smart TV, whatever it is, all you have to do is tap one button to get protected. It really is that simple. So if, like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Visit expressvpn.com slash Walsh and get free, three extra months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash Walsh. Go to expressvpn.com slash Walsh to learn more. Men fear that women will laugh at them. Women fear that men will kill them. And this is why men, especially straight, cisgendered white men, are so incredibly fragile. Historically speaking, in patriarchal systems, when women piss off men, they are putting themselves in life-threatening danger, which leads to women having to tone police themselves as a defense mechanism. Consciously or otherwise, women go out of their way to either withhold criticism from men or to deliver it as gently as possible, which results in an entire society of men that don't even realize that they expect to be coddled by the women in their lives. And so when rightly receiving criticism or anger from women, men tend to react like toddlers. So gentlemen, shut up, toughen up, and listen to and acknowledge the reality of the lived experience of women. Because it shouldn't take a straight-passing, cisgendered white man telling you this for you to listen. Straight passing? Buddy, you're about as straight passing as a circle, okay? Ha! Got he! You pass for straight about as much as I pass for a 19-year-old black lesbian. That's that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's just keep going. Okay, so that was that was brave. And that was another brave and bold one. Me too. I, I am also opposed to that bad thing. I, I also don't like bad things, ladies. So, someone give me a cookie. By the way, is is sexualization, is, is that a bad thing or not now? Because I'm, I'm confused. Isn't it empowering for a woman to use her sexuality in that way? Or is it only empowering when she does it on OnlyFans or, or Pornhub? I mean, the woman who had her legs spread for the hamburger advertisement or whatever it was, she wasn't there against her will. The, the hamburger people, they didn't have a gun to her head. She chose to do that. And isn't that empowering for her to make that choice for herself? And what I know for sure is that if this had been a video defending sexualized advertisements as, adver as, as empowering for women, that same doofus on the right would have still been there with his hand raised saying, I agree. Because it doesn't matter what's being said. He's still going to have his hand raised saying he agrees. Tell me about the time when you realized that the bar is super low for men. I mean, I've known this for a while, but a good example of this happened a couple days ago. I was with one of my best female friends. I won't tell you her name because privacy, but she told me that when she first met me, I made her super uncomfortable in a predatory, assaulty sort of way. Well, I immediately started freaking out. I was like, yo, tell me what I did so that I can never do that to anyone ever again. 
No. And she said, no, 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 no. It's nothing you did. You you have nothing to apologize for. And, and she would go on to tell me that the fact I treated her with decency, respect, and like a person was off-putting because she thought, oh, he just wants to get in my pants. She told me that she only let her guard down around me when she found out I was dating someone else at the time. The fact that this guy is trying to manipulate me into sex seemed more likely than this guy is a good person is sad. Lots of things are sad about that. I, I mean, you know, but, but you know what? I, I take it all back. Everything I said about male feminists, they're not a bunch of dickless weasels, it turns out. They're, they're heroes. I mean, this guy recorded a whole video to tell us about the time that he was so nice and gentlemanly and respectful of, of a woman that she assumed he was a rapist. I'm such a nice guy that women think I'm going to rape them, is what he's saying. There goes my- because that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? By the way, if the story is even true, which probably isn't, isn't this a story about a cynical, self-obsessed woman who assumes that everyone around her is trying to sleep with her? Is his friend AOC, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. You thought you were going to be right? Yeah. All right, we'll try. I, I can only endure one more, so let's uh, continue. Men fear that women... No, will not this guy again. Shut up. Women. All right. Because let's be honest, feminism has left men behind. No. That is factually inaccurate. The very things you describe in your video as feminism for men are things that feminism have enabled men to do. Only feminism has allowed men to create the spaces where they can behave as they want to without fear of retribution. We benefit from feminism every day. We benefit from feminism more than women do. I'm I, I'm not even sure what he was trying to say there. Um, I honestly don't know. But in fairness, that video probably didn't really belong in this compilation anyway, because we're talking about male feminists, which would seem to exclude anybody with purple hair. So that probably we shouldn't have put that video there at all. Got it. <laughs> and uh, I was going to keep going, but I, I honestly can't. I'm I'm nauseated. So that's it. Don't be a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> 